Rwanda, home to incredible wildlife, stunning landscapes, and people working to save it all. Nearly a decade after our first journey to Africa, we go back to witness conservation wins, the threats still faced, and the people helping both the animals and communities thrive. There is a lot of people on the board really joining hands to do something big in Rwanda. Watch us, watch us. They're all heroes and wow, we couldn't be more proud. From KPRC2 and the Houston Zoo, this is Saving Wildlife, Return to Rwanda. Hello, I'm Keith Garvin. And I'm Daniela Guzman, standing in the stunning Birds of the World habitat at the Houston Zoo. Here you can visit the African savanna, the North American woodlands, and the South American wetlands all in one spot. It's really fitting because while the Houston Zoo's conservation work spans the globe, the heart of it is here, where Houstonians are supporting the zoo's mission to save animals in the wild. The Houston Zoo currently has more than 30 conservation projects, including multiple projects on the African continent. KPRC2's Andy Sirota first traveled there with the Houston Zoo in 2015. And then in 2024, he returned to Rwanda to learn about the continued challenges and to spotlight the conservation wins. From Houston to Washington, D.C., to Belgium and then Rwanda, we traveled with a team from the Houston Zoo and some very important equipment. In the capital city of Kigali, more than 8,000 miles from home, the equipment that would be used to set up the first wildlife veterinary clinic in Rwanda was handed over to some excited conservation partners. <laughs> over the course of the next week, the Houston Zoo's Rwandan partners would learn how to use the equipment both in the new clinic and in the field. Having portable equipment is a game changer. In this world of conservation, the news can be really heavy. There are threats to wildlife from many angles, but sometimes we, we don't hear about what makes me so proud of this work in Rwanda and the work of our conservation partners is the success. Ben Jones is the Houston Zoo's Vice President of Conservation and Education. He's on this journey with our production crew and two members of the Houston Zoo's veterinary team. Dr. Christine Moulter, Looks like we have located the zebra. Um, and veterinary technician Jennifer Atkinson, who is now serving as hospital manager for the Houston Zoo. They were both in Rwanda for the first time. This has just formed an even deeper connection for the work that we're doing. The partners that we work with, they're so excited that we're here. Traveling to Rwanda and having conservation partners visit Houston strengthens connections. That also goes for everyone who will come out to see the birds of the world and this African savanna aviary. It's easy to make an impact while seeing fascinating animals like the vultures or a pair of beautiful gray crowned cranes, which highlight a new conservation initiative started after KPRC's first trip to Rwanda. Whether cruising along a smooth Rwandan highway or bumping down a rough dirt road, Dr. Olivier and Sengi Mana will be dancing in the driver's seat. See me on a Friday on a dance floor. The wildlife veterinarian finds joy in these mobile jam sessions, but Dr. Olivier doesn't have much downtime. He was a field veterinarian for the Gorilla Doctors prior to launching his own nonprofit organization in 2015. There were only about 300 left in the country in the years 2012. And that really shocked me. And I told myself, like, hey, um, who's doing something to protect the crane? He founded the Rwanda Wildlife Conservation Association, or RWCA. We started, like, telling Rwandans, hey, cranes are in danger. Let's do something about it. So our ultimate goal was to stop the trade and remove all the captive cranes and introduce them back to their natural habitat. We made the population to become over 1,200 in eight years on. One thing I love watching about the cranes is the dance when they are dancing. While it seems fitting, the dancing wildlife doctor made it his mission to save the dancing birds. That's far from all he does, and he's not doing it alone. Really, I was so lucky to find like some people who took on the mission 
you've seen Dr. Deo, uh, there are so many other people we started together at that time. And again, now we've grown to becoming over 210 staff. Yes. More recently, additional veterinarians have been training to run RWCA's new clinic that the Houston Zoo has made possible. Dr. Jessica is the only female wildlife and conservation veterinarian in the whole country. She's extremely caring, extremely smart. Dr. Pascal is super enthusiastic. In the field, even more people are working with RWCA to save wildlife. How often do the park rangers go out on patrol? These uh, marsh rangers, we call them marsh rangers. We use the marsh rangers. So they go every day. Marsh rangers help monitor and count the birds in the 16,000 acre wetlands. We have now like uh, 75 marsh rangers. Roughly a third of them had previously been responsible for illegal activity impacting wildlife. Our great crown friends, let's protect them. That's what it means. When some locals unknowingly were harming cranes by letting their cows graze in areas where the birds might nest, RWCA came up with a solution that benefited both the cranes and the people. They replanted the land with native trees and built a structure nearby where the cows and the hay they needed could be kept. The move also gave the villagers an easy way to harvest manure for income. When one man's cow died, RWCA used Houston Zoo funds to help him get a new one, knowing the positive impact would trickle down. Uh, <laughs> Says thanks to Houston Zoo. This one? Yeah, that's his cow. Wildlife can thrive and people can benefit. RWCA has looked for other ways to improve the lives of nearby villagers. Our dream is actually to put rainwater harvesting system uh, to every single house here in this village. And they've provided training for women in the region to bring in income through a sewing cooperative. You see, they just made these dresses today. Are you serious? <laughs> While Dr. Olivier puts his trust in RWCA's team, he is grateful the Houston hey. Zoo entrusted him to save wildlife in Rwanda. And the Houston Zoo came with, like, it's like just a full package, and, and, and everything became possible. From, like, empowerment, trust, financial support, it felt like just, yes, this is the partner we needed, and we felt like we belong with the Houston Zoo, and, and, and we are saving wildlife together. Dr. Olivier is a, is a hero, a conservation hero to us at Houston Zoo. He's so um, brilliant. He's got an incredible work ethic. He's just got the most incredible people skills. So we are thrilled with this partnership and he's a leader that we can all follow. From new partners like RWCA to existing partners like Gorilla Doctors, the Houston Zoo helps with financial guidance, veterinary expertise, technical support, and anything needed to make sure the organizations can reach their goals. For the Gorilla Doctors, the forest is their hospital. They care for animals in the wild, conducting health checks on gorilla families administering antibiotics if an animal is sick, or sedatives if they have to remove a snare. And while that work continues daily, they now have a place where they can do even more with gorilla medicine. It's good to see you, my friend. Long time. Nine years ago, when I first met Dr. Jean Bosco Noelli, he was already a seasoned wildlife veterinarian. Since then, he's expanded his work with the Gorilla Doctors. He just got back from 10 months in the United States where he trained to be our veterinary pathologist, which is um, incredible. This is dramatically different from what I saw mm. nine years ago. Mm -hmm. When you were here nine years ago, we were renting a building just a little bit down the hill from here, and we had the opportunity to purchase property for the first time, and it was the Houston Zoo that came through for us. While the headquarters building opened in 2022, a dedication was held for the Gorilla Doctor's new laboratory days before our arrival in 2024. One Health Laboratory, it's a very special place because it's named after a very special doctor. Yeah, Dr. Mike Confer has been uh, instrumental to this organization 
So we decided to dedicate this laboratory because he was a pioneer of One Health. The One Health perspective is a belief that the health of one species is linked to the entire ecosystem. This is a quote from Dr. Mike from our last special nine years ago. They basically are our cousins. And if we as humans can't put the effort in to saving animals that are that closely related to us, it doesn't bode well for us or the, the other, other animals, animals that aren't, aren't as, closely. as closely related to us. That's Mike right there. He's absolutely right. Gorilla doctors like Dr. Noelli, who are so from the region, the make the work sustainable. Patients. Partners like the Houston yeah. Zoo help the One Health mission grow even more. I don't know if you noticed when you came in, but we've planted a special garden in memory of one of our Houston Zoo partners and friends. Peter Rieger. Peter Rieger. He was instrumental in us being able to acquire this place to serve as a regional headquarters, so we wanted to honor him. The garden was newly planted when we were there. A tree trunk left after a storm was carved to become the centerpiece. It really signifies both our commitment to our mission, but also the fact that because it's placed here in a memorial garden, it just recognizes that we can't do our work without so many people. If Dr. Mike and Peter Rieger were both here today and saw all of this, what would they say? I hope that they would have huge smiles on their face and um, be amazed at what we've been able to accomplish over the last several years to know that they were incredibly important players in that, in that progress and that growth. I think they would be thrilled. We are almost there. You see the trekkers over there? Still ahead, a trek up a rainy mountain to find a rare set of gorilla twins. Plus, a special tour to learn the many ways the longest running gorilla conservation group in the world is saving the great apes. First, you can help by recycling old cell phones. Some electronics contain a mineral called tantalum that's mined in areas where gorillas live. Recycling old devices means less new tantalum is needed. Look for more easy ways you can save animals in the wild on click2houston.com slash conservation.